Good evening. Uh, we present the news summary. The Seychelles Fishing Authority has met with several fishermen on Pralin to discuss uh, several projects to be implemented in the districts of Bissetan and Grand Tans. The meeting was held at the Baha'i Center on Bissetan. The Minister for Fisheries, Jean-François Ferrari, was also present at the meeting. The Bissetan projects uh, will cost around 22 million rupees and those of Grand Tans will cost around 500,000 rupees. The projects expected to start this year. We are serious about making sure the project is going ahead, both for Grantans and uh, Besantan. So we, we brought the minister back here with us as SFA and the stakeholders to re-energize themselves to make sure that they understand that the government is going to implement the project. And although some delays, we're going to make it happen for them. For the past three months, uh, from May to July uh, this year, the police has sent 148 traffic offences before the magistrate court for prosecution. The cases extend from the exceeding of speed limit, failing to wear a seat belt, and driving a motor vehicle without a valid road tax certificate to parking offences. 118 of the cases have ended in convictions with fines ranging from 500 to 8,000 rupees, while 30 have either been uh, withdrawn or dismissed before the court. All those cases, they are proactive cases. The police officers have been out on patrol, um, uh, in spot checks, speed checks. So there are cases of speedings, there are cases whereby uh, drivers have not wear their seatbelt, or passengers have not wear their seatbelt, so they have been fined. And it is not a matter of deciding which cases to put before the court. Speeding cases, we put all, all those cases before the court. But regarding the fines, the, for the 200 rupees fines, what we do is that uh, those who have not paid within the time frame given, three days, then we, we prepare the file, we send it before the court. So that's why you will see that there's about 140 cases which have been sent and 118 have been dealt with for convictions. This has been for the past uh, three months. And we are always, always uh, on the road to ensure that people are abiding with all the regulations in place. And uh, regarding the fines, we are very happy of uh, the outcome of the cases. There are cases up to 8,000 rupees. People who have been using mobile phones while driving, some have been fined up three to 4,000 rupees. So we are very happy with this. A total of 5,065 offences under the Public Health Act have also been recorded between January to date. The offenders have been served with fixed penalties and a number of cases have also been sent to the Magistrate Court for conviction. We know that cases are being mentioned before the court, are being heard before the court, because summons are being issued. So we know that there is a quite a good, good work being carried out. We just want to ensure that people do abide by the laws, by the public health orders. Because we, we, we cannot have people who just say, no, I will not listen to what the public health is saying. Okay? These are orders. So wh whenever there's orders, so we have to abide with it. We, are, we know that cases have been presented before the court. Yes, there are convictions also on the health uh, orders. According to the latest COVID update from the Ministry of Health, the level of community transmission remains above the pre-surge level, that's uh, concerning the COVID cases. And in the past week, the moving average has increased to around 60, consistent with the recent increase in reported cases. Three additional COVID-related deaths uh, that occurred in the first and third week of August have also been reported bringing the total there to 104. There are 581 active COVID cases in the country, 557 on May, 15 on Prale, and 9 on La Ligue. A total of 5,065 offences under the Public Health Act have also been recorded between January to date. The Seychelles Revenue Commission, uh, SRC, says there are several reasons why there have been delays in delivering uh, parcels from overseas to local customers. The SRC says uh, there, uh, the delays uh, were caused by either a lack of personnel as some of uh, the workers were unable to get to work due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. 
SRC uh, also added uh, that some individuals, agents uh, and couriers sometimes did not keep their appointments to collect their parcels and some uh, do not even bring all the necessary documents with them. The SRC was responding to complaints from some members of the public who said there had been delays in the delivery of their packages and other goods from overseas. Regarding uh, the delays which was being caused by uh, um, uh, customs lately was due to the fact that uh, some officers in the entry processing unit has contracted uh, COVID-19 and uh, therefore um, uh, we have to work with a limited number of officers. Um, uh, we try our utmost to process, delivery the cargo um, uh, through fast tracking some of the bill of entry uh, which was sent to the examination unit for clearance and then return to entry processing for further processing. Um, it is important to note that some delays also are caused by uh, the client or importers who do not uh, submit their documents uh, as per requested by customs. I would advise the public to ensure that they uh, uh, have sufficient uh, resources, manpower, trucks, and also to respect their appointment. The University of Seychelles, UNICE, has received the Batch of Information Technology Materials. It was the High Commissioner of India to Seychelles, Dalbi Singh Shuhag, who made the donation this morning to the University's Vice-Chancellor, Joël Perrault. The donation funded by the Indian government aims to encourage more Seychellois to take online courses at the, uni at the University of Seychelles instead of traveling abroad. The donation cost $72,000 and include computers, printers, screens, as well as furniture. Quality education, health, care are two most primary requirements of human development and well-being. They are also most critical in terms of growth of a nation as they determine the quality of manpower that a country would have. However, providing quality education, health care is one of the most difficult tasks that any government faces. It requires huge investments to create infrastructure and employ highly skilled manpower. Creating physical infrastructure while expensive is still doable. But often it becomes very difficult to find enough skilled people to man these institutions and provide actual services. With this in mind, the former President of India, Dr. Abdul Kalam, had conceived a Pan-Africa e-network project, which was launched in 2009 to provide education and medical services through e-communication links, mostly satellite-based, between university and hospitals in India and their counterparts in Africa. This was the news summary. Thank you for your attention.